Hello everyone and welcome to the canine texturing tutorial for Substance Painter. If you haven't already seen my Substance Painter basics tutorial and you've never used Substance Painter before, I highly recommend watching that first. So before we get started, make sure you have Substance Painter downloaded. If you don't have Substance Painter, there is a 30 day free trial and for the moment you should be able to get it on this website, but I do believe they're going to be switching it over to Creative Cloud. Okay, once you have that downloaded, let's open up the canine texturing file. It should look a little something like this. When you first open it up, you're going to see two different models. The top one here is going to be an exploded version of the model, and the bottom one here is going to be with everything combined. This one here is in case you need to texture underneath anything, so some things overlap in the file, and when that happens, going up here to this file will make things a lot easier to texture it. Let's go over some layer organization first. You're going to see three different colored folders. You'll see red, blue, and purple. Red means that this layer or folder is important, so you probably shouldn't touch this. Blue means that there are multiple texture options within that folder. So for example, the extras folder here is probably the best example of this, so let's turn that on. All right, so now we see some arm and leg warmers, and in here I also have some fingerless gloves. The last color type is purple. So there are four different uh, texture options here, and the Border Collie Fox and Wolf all have purple folders within them. So let's open up the Wolf, and you'll see these three different purple folders. These three purple folders are the different style options that you can choose from. Realistic fur, soft fur, and stylized fur. Uh, the wolf, border collie, and fox will all have these three options in them. I also have this layer here, which says draw below this layer. Essentially what it is, is an extra layer of shading. So let me turn this on and off so you can see what it does. Uh, if you want to use this, you need to make sure you add all of your layers below this layer here. You'll be able to find this layer on a lot of the different texture sets. You don't have to use it if you don't want to, but uh, in my opinion it helps make the avatar feel a little bit less flat. If your computer is running slow, I recommend deleting the files that you're not planning on using. So if you want to just start off with the wolf as a base, you can go ahead and delete these ones here, and this will help Substance run a little bit better. You can also go over to your texture set settings and change the size. So say you want to work in 2K, you can always export out those textures at a higher resolution later. And if your computer is still running a little bit slow, I have a simplified version of the Substance Painter file that includes less layer options, but uh, it will help your computer run a bit faster. I forgot to mention one pretty important thing. You can swap between 2D mode and 3D mode in Substance Painter. You can do that up here. So right now we have 3D only visible, but you can see both the 2D mode and the 3D mode at the same time, or just the 2D mode if you want. Sometimes this makes texturing certain things a little bit easier. So just keep that in mind while you're doing your recolor. So the last bit of layer organization that I want to go over is how most of the folders are organized. Let's head back over to the wolf folder and go into the soft fur and we're going to check out the body main color here. Each folder uh, is almost always going to have a base color, shadows, and highlight layer. So you can edit these layers accordingly, so the base color let me turn this off so you can see what it does. It's going to be that, and then the shadows and highlights. If you want to change the color of this, select layer, and scroll down, click on this. And now there are a couple different ways that you can choose a color. 
you can drag around these sliders down here. You can paste in the number here. You can color pick and substance is awesome. So it lets you actually color pick outside of substance. So if you have a reference image that you're color picking from, you can use this color picker to pick directly from that image. You can also drag around this here or use the picker. Now let's change the shadow color to match that base color that we just chose. Do the same thing, click on that box. And what I like to do is color pick from the base color and then drag down the color picker to make a darker version of the base color that I just chose. We're gonna do the same thing for the highlight. Now we have a color with matching shadows and highlight. Now let's say you wanna duplicate this folder. Select it and hit Control D. Now since we have layers, you have to keep that in mind. This layer is going to be beneath all of these layers. So if you want it to be on top of everything, drag it all the way to the top. it's going to fill this entire texture set. So let's just go over that really quickly. We have different texture sets here. And when you're painting, you can only paint in a specific texture set. So right now we're in the body texture set, so we're only going to be able to paint on the body. If you wanted to change a texture set, just click on it. If you wanna hide other texture sets to make things easier, you can click the eye to hide them. I'm going to hide everything so you all can see better what's going on. Now let's go back to that layer that we just duplicated. If we don't want it to fill everything, we can add what's called a layer mask. Go over to that folder and right click, and you can either add a white mask, black mask, or bitmap mask. I'm going to add a black mask. Now, since we added a black mask, it's going to hide everything. So this entire folder is going to be hidden. If you want to paint on that layer now, you're going to need to select a brush. To select a brush, uh, like I just did here, go over and hit brushes. And now double click on whatever brush you want to use. Now go over to your layer mask and make sure it's selected. Scroll down and make sure white is selected. Now we can paint in the layer mask. To undo, hit Control Z. If you want to paint with symmetry, go up here and select this button here. This is a great time saver and I often use it. If you're using a mouse or maybe have an unsteady hand, you can turn on lazy mouse right here and you can decrease it or increase it to your preference. One thing I forgot to mention before is this part right up here and these are your channels. So right now we're in the material mode, which means that all of the channels are showing while they're affected by lighting. So let me zoom out to show you what I mean. So right now we can see the model and I can rotate the light and it's affected by lighting here. You can also, let me turn on these eyes. Uh, so see these eyes have transparency along with the blush right here. And so when you're in the material mode, you can see transparency properly. I like to sometimes texture in the base color mode because it's a little bit closer to what I'll see in VR chat uh, with some of the shaders that I use. But while you're in base color mode, your transparency isn't going to work properly as you can see here. This is because you're only seeing the base color. So you'll see the blush here and it's going to be completely filled. But don't worry about that, everything is fine. You can just switch back over to the material mode and everything should still be working properly. Working in the base color channel is 
really good too for color picking. So if you have your reference and you want to make sure the colors are matching up properly, uh, working in this mode here is really handy. Alright, let's go over how to recreate some of the different style options. Like I said before, we have soft textures, realistic textures, and stylized textures. So I'm going to switch over really quick to the fox since we've just made the wolf red. Alright, I've got the stylized version of the fox open here. So to recreate this fur edging, um, let's go into our white fur and I'm going to extend the white fur just a bit so I can show you all how to recreate that edging. I'm going to have my hard brush and I'm going to work in symmetry for this. It's going to take a second to load. Okay, I'm going to extend it all the way down to here. So to get this fur edging here, I'm going to be using a tablet pen, so it's going to have pen pressure. But I think you might be able to recreate this with the mouse. It's going to be very difficult though. So I'm going to use the hard brush. So make sure you have the basic hard brush selected. And then I'm just going to paint these little fur pieces. And you will have to do this all around the edge for as many or for as long as you want to see this fur texture. Okay, let's go over to the soft fur. For this one, we're going to do the same thing and extend the border of it. I'm going to use the soft brush for this though, so double click on that. And you want to make sure you're using the soft brush so you have that nice fuzzy edge because we're going to grab now the um, smudge tool. and just take your smudge tool brush, or sub smudge tool, tool, I guess, and just drag down to recreate that soft fur effect. I'm using kind of a big brush here, so I'm gonna reduce the size of that. And this should get you that same effect that I did to make the soft fur. The last one is the realistic fur and this one is going to be a little bit trickier than the other two but it's still not too difficult so let's dive into this one uh, you're gonna see these two red layers here and as I said before uh, if you see a red layer you probably shouldn't touch that layer so don't touch these because if you do it's going to mess up this fur edging that you can see right along here Okay, to start off, we're just going to go over how to change the color. So I'm going to change the color of this white section here. Find that layer group or folder, open it up, and then select the base color. And let's make it red. Okay, that's how you can change the color of uh, these layers. It's the same as before. Um, and now I'm going to show how to add another color if you would like to do that. So select the folder and hit Control E to duplicate it. Now you need to do it this way because this folder 
is using anchor points. So if you know how to use anchor points, you can just go ahead and add a fill layer and then make those anchor points work. But if you don't know how to do that, this is gonna be the easiest way to go about adding another color. So you will know the anchor points are working when you have the mask selected and you see this fur mix filter here. So to clear the mask, have the mask selected, go over to the polygon fill, select mesh fill, and drag this all the way down to black. Now select everything. Now let's change the color. I'm gonna make it blue this time. Okay, so there shouldn't be anything in the mask. Um, so now we're gonna go grab the soft brush. So make sure your mask is selected and this is back up to white. Now you know it's working as well when you can see how these two colors are blending together in the fur. And I'm using the soft brush for this because it will give you more of that blend. If you want even more though, go up to your stroke opacity here and decrease that. Maybe that was a little too much. Okay, there we go. See how this is blending even more now that we've decreased our stroke opacity? All right, that's how you use this realistic fur shader. So now you should know how to use all of those uh, different style options. Editing the eye material is also super easy. So let's go ahead and do that. There are two ways you can edit them. The easiest way is to scroll down and find the eye color hue shifter. Turn on that layer and then select the hue shifter. You'll see a hue slider here and you can slide this to whatever color you would like. If you want to be a little more precise than this though, you can turn off that layer and check out the eye color folder. In here, you'll see lots of different layers. Um, so let's go and change some of them. If you want blue eyes, you can, this is the base right here. And then these two layers here are highlights. These are some shadow colors. And you can be pretty precise here with what colors you want your eyes. Now let's head over to some of the props. So the main thing I wanted to talk about with the props is how to add your own name or picture to the dog tag. So let's turn off our symmetry for this. And in the props material, this is gonna take a minute to load. In this texture set, we're going to open up the collar and you'll see the tag. Open up that folder and there should be two layers called text here and paw print. I pre-made a paw print for it if you want, but the text here is where you can put your own custom thing. So turn that layer on and we're going to look for a font. So click this and select show all. Now type in font. You can pick from any of these pre-made fonts, so I'm just going to do the first one. Oops, I didn't select it. Double click it to select it. The default is going to say substance, and I'm going to assume you don't want it to say substance, so select your mask and go down here, highlight it, and then type in whatever you want. Once you've done that, you should have whatever you typed into um, your, I guess, brush. So if you want to change the size, you can do that up here. And then to add it, just select it. Now you should see your name. 
You can also add alphas to this. So I'm going to undo this really quick with Control Z. What an alpha is, is if you see these black and white images right here, these are called alphas. So you can import your own alpha and make them. And basically what an alpha is, is um, it has two parts, black and white. White means it's going to show that part of it and black is going to hide it. So let's grab this arrow here. And you can see how that works. So you can, like I said, you can import your own if you want, or you can select from substances collection of alphas. Let's go over to the tails now. So I'm gonna go over to the fluffy tail and I'm gonna change the texture on the uh, body. So be right back. Alrighty, I've gone back to the red wolf that we just created from the beginning. And I'm going to show you how to make your tail color the same as your body color. To do that, let's get the folder of the body color and we're going to choose the one, so I'm going to switch over here to face color mode so you can see better. We're going to choose the color that is right where the tail intersects with the body. So it's auto saving here. Sometimes it does that, it just takes a minute. So find that folder, select it and hit control C. Now I'm going to do this fluffy tail here. This is going to be tail two. Okay, now that we've swapped texture sets to the tail, uh, let's say that we want to keep this white part from the tail. Open up the wolf folder and we'll use the soft fur texture. And now we're going to paste in that color into this folder group. So hit control V. Now the red tail is in here, but you'll notice that even though you have the same exact material or colors as the body, um, the colors will still be a little bit off at the base. So if you don't want that, open up the original pop color folder and find this yellow folder or layer, sorry. You're going to drag this layer into the new layer that you just pasted. Now select this box and this is only going to work if you're in base color mode so make sure you're here and grab the color picker and color pick from where the base of the tail meets the body. Now this should hide the color difference. And the reason why there's a color difference is because I'm using baked lighting to add a little bit more depth to this avatar. So it's not just flat colors. So because of that, sometimes little issues like this pop up. One quick tip for texturing something like this is using the polygon fill tool. To do that, let's add a fill layer. And I'm feeling like blue today, so we're going to use that. And add a black mask. You can also do this with a paint layer as well, but I'm just a big fan of using fill layers. So head over to the polygon fill. And you have a couple of different options here on how to fill things. So you can fill them by polygons. And what a polygon is, is if you see this square here, this is a polygon. Oh, and make sure that this is white because again, white means show. So this is a polygon. You can also fill by triangles. So this right here is a triangle. You can fill by mesh. So that's going to fill the entire thing because this is just one mesh. And then lastly, you can fill by UV chunk. So this one here is really good for the tail because you can fill in parts or basically individual clumps of fur for this tail. And you can make them all different colors if you want to. And this is really the easiest way to texture this tail if you want 
multiple different colors within the tail. You can also swap over to the 2D mode for this tail and it might be a little bit easier to texture in here, just depends on your preference. The last thing we're going to do is add in some buff maps. So that's not going to make the avatar mesh itself buff because that's what the buff slider in VRChat is for and also Unity. Um, but it's going to add buff shading to the avatar. So that pairs really well with that buff slider. So let's do that now. Make sure that you're in your body material texture set and then go on over to your texture set settings. I'm going to switch over to the material mode so you can see it a bit better. Now go here to your drop down and select show all. Now we're going to need to search for buff. You should see six maps pop up that look like this and they all should say buff body and then something else. So back over to your texture set settings, scroll down. And you'll see images that look very similar to the images over here. You're going to need to replace these images with these ones. So let's start off with the normal map first. If you go over your image, you'll see the file name. We'll say underscore normal. This here says underscore normal, so we're going to replace it with that. You're going to do the same for all of these maps. This is also going to take a bit of time to load, so don't be worried if it's taking a bit for your computer to figure things out. This is what the final result should look like after it's all done loading. Now, once you're done editing your textures, you should be ready to export. To do that, go up to File and select Export Textures. This is your output directory and that's where your new textures will be saved to. This is defaulted to where I saved it last, so you're going to need to select this and then choose where you want to save your new textures. Over here are your texture sets. You're going to select the ones that you've changed. So if you've made edits to all of these different texture sets, leave them checked. If you want to not export one of them, select the checkbox and it won't export. So to check the size of the map that it's going to export as, um, select one of them and then right here you'll see that this is going to export out at a 4k uh, resolution. If you don't want that you can select this little pencil here and change the size. I've left all of these to be what I last exported them out as so you don't have to mess with that if you don't want to. Also um, you only have to export out the base color if that's the only thing you changed. If you didn't change any of the other material settings, don't bother exporting out these textures. Once you have everything selected, hit export. And now you should be ready to apply them in Unity. If you are doing a VRM avatar, so a VTuber avatar, you're going to need to make one last quick edit to the eyes. So if you're just doing a VRChat avatar, go ahead and skip this part, but VTuber avatars, stay tuned. Okay, so you're gonna need to drag in your eye texture that you just exported. We need to fix the transparency on this because the shader that you use as a VTuber is a bit different than the one that you use for VRChat. So I'm gonna use Photoshop but you can use whatever 2D editor you would like. Make sure you unlock the background. 
And if you want your avatar to have highlights in the eyes, leave these little white sections here. Uh, if you don't want them, you can just erase them. So I'm going to use the magic wand tool and we're going to select this whole gray area here. Select it and then hit delete. You need to make sure you see this checkered pattern in the background because that means that it will be transparent when we export it. I'm also going to go ahead and erase the highlights as well. Once you've removed the transparency, you're going to go export this out as a PNG. So hit File, Save As, and make sure you have PNG selected. This is really important because PNGs support transparency. So hit Save. And now let's head on over to Unity to apply those custom textures to your avatar. Okay, so now it's time to apply those custom textures. This one is going to be how to do it for VR Chat, and then next I'm going to do it for the VRM avatar. So I go over this in the upload tutorial, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. But basically we're going to open up the correct version of Unity, and then drag in the SDK, the Poyomi Tune Shader, this is the free version by the way, and the K9 Unity package. You're going to need to drag all of those in, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, once this is open, you're going to go into this masculine canine folder and select the setup scene. So if you're not using dynamic bones, use this one. If you are, use this one. Select the model and hit F to get closer. So let's apply those custom textures now. Go into the materials folder and we're going to do the body first. So if you are doing the regular body, um, go into this folder here. But if you're doing the buff body like I'm going to do, go into the buff body folder. Also, if you used that realistic fur, um, make sure that you're going to duplicate a uh, realistic fur material. So anything that says um, underscore realistic is a material that you should duplicate. If you are doing um, any of the other style options, make sure you are selecting either a soft or stylized version. So I'm not going to be using the realistic one, so I'm going to hit Control D on a material. That's going to duplicate it. Now let's import our body material. So find the body um, and drag it in, then select it, and you're going to need to change a couple of settings. So the first one is uh, make sure you have streaming mip map selected. Then this down here is optional. Uh, I'm going to set this to 4K because that's what I exported out this texture as. Um, you can also use compression if you would like. And I'm going to set it to high quality and I'm going to use crunch compression and set that to 100 and then select apply. Again, this is all of these settings down here are optional. So you can choose whatever you would like. If you don't want to use compression, you don't have to use any. But if you want to compress it even further, go ahead and do that. Now let's go back to the material that we duplicated. We're going to need to unlock the shader and then drag that body material that you imported into the main texture. Now drag it onto the avatar. It should be applied now. So once you're done with that, Go back up here and select Lock in Optimize Shader. 
Now let's go and change the eye color. So if you want to use highlight, select this folder, but if you don't want to use any highlights, select this one. I'm going to not use any highlights, so let's go into here and do the same thing. Duplicate one of these materials. Again, go in and find that eye texture that you exported. We're going to do the same thing that we did before. Make sure you go up here and then select uh, Screaming Maps. This is a 1K map, so I'm going to switch it to 1K. And then I'm going to add on some compression. Go back to the material that you duplicated and select Unlock Shader. Select the drop down for Main. And now drag in your eye material into the main texture. Now we're going to add this to the eyes. So just going to drag this right on to the eyes. And now it should be applied. Next, let's do the hair. So I didn't edit the hair but I'll just show you how to do it anyway. It's going to be the same as the body for the mohawk hair and a little bit different for the mullet hair. So we're in the mullet right now, so we need to unhide it. Find your mullet and select this checkbox right here. This is going to show the mullet. Now we're going to find a material, duplicate it again, and all you're going to have to do is the same thing as before. So get that mullet material or mullet texture that you exported, change all the settings. And so the mullet's already gray, so you're not really going to notice any difference, but just drag it right on. And then we're going to rehide it by clicking on the mullet again and then checking this checkbox. You don't really have to hide it, but uh, in your little screenshot before you upload, it will show that it's on. So you want to make sure that's off um, so the picture looks better. Mohawk is also going to be very straightforward, so I'm not going to show it because it's going to be the same as the body. To do the tails is also very similar. Uh, you'll see tail 2 is um, not hidden, but tail 1 is, so let's go ahead and a apply a um, your custom texture to tail 2. So make sure to keep in mind uh, you have the realistic and stylized and soft textures for the tails as well as the bodies. So if you did the realistic version, make sure that you have the realistic, um, uh, the realistic material that you're duplicating. So you know because it will say underscore realistic. If you don't want that um, realistic burr, Make sure that you're duplicating a material that says underscore soft or underscore stylized. So uh, we didn't do a realistic one, so I'm going to duplicate an underscore soft. This is tail two, so find tail two and tail two underscore soft. We're good. Hit control D. Now let's import that custom texture. And we made this one a little crazy with red and blue, so 
we're going to select the streaming mitmaps. And I should have named these. Here it is. Uh, select unlock. Lock that in again. And now just drag it right on. And there's your custom texture on the tail. For tail two, select it. Or sorry, tail one, select it. And then hit this checkbox. And now you can do the same thing. And I'm not going to show this one because it's going to be the same process as you just did. And then when you're done, remember to uncheck this. The last thing that we're going to do is show how to apply it to the props. Okay, let's go grab that props texture that we exported. Drag it right in. And we're going to do the same thing again. Okay, so there are going to be two options here. If you want normal glasses, so this is glasses uh, with see-through lenses, then select this material, one of these ones right here. Anything that says glasses underscore is going to be one of those. If you want the sunglasses though, so that's not going to have see-through lenses, select one of these and duplicate them. I'm going to do a sunglasses option. So I'm going to select one of these hit Control D and now I'm going to select unlock shader and drag this into the main texture like you were doing before and lock that in so you'll notice that there's nowhere to apply this material you just made uh, to any of the props so what we're going to have to do is select the body and find the blend shapes so they're right here and scroll down and so the reason why we have to do it this way is because all of these props are toggleable in game so they need to be hidden on a blend shape and you're going to scroll down and find the next loop it should be under body edits turn that on you only have to apply this to one of the props and it will apply to all of them. Okay, let's drag on our texture. And I didn't change the next loop, so it's not really going to make any difference. But if you changed anything on the props, you'll notice a difference. Now let's rehide that next loop. So go back to body. And again, this is not a requirement, but just if you want your a little picture to not have um, the neck loop in it, you'll need to make sure you turn this off. Okay, and uh, if you changed the blush color, you're going to also need to change the blush material. So I'm going to select this blush and uh, unlock it. And now just drag on your texture to the blush and then lock that back in. Go back to the body. Now let's find the blush. It should be all the way down here in the miscellaneous um, category. So turn that on and drag on the blush material. I didn't really make any changes to this so you're not going to notice the difference again. But if you change the color, you should see now that the blush has a different color. Go ahead and turn the blush off and you should be all good to go. You're ready to upload your avatar. So to do that, uh, you can just head on over to the VRChat SDK and hit show control panel. If you need any help from here, go check out the upload tutorial. Okay, now I'm gonna show how to do the VRM custom textures. So if you're trying to do that, stay tuned. 
Let's upload your custom textures now to your VRM avatar. I'm going to go through this more in the VRM upload tutorial, but uh, just as a quick reminder, we are going to drag in the Unity VRM package and then drag in the VRM avatar. If you want to make more edits, you're going to need to do the VRM avatar from scratch, but I do have this preset up one right here. Okay, now let's drag the VRM avatar into the hierarchy. Select the model and then hit F to get a little bit closer. Now we need to find the materials folder. It should say materials right up here. So double click that folder to open it. And here are all of the textures on the avatar. So now locate where you export out your custom textures. When you're importing them, make sure that you have that eye material that you edited. This is really important or else the transparency isn't going to work on the eyes. So now I'm going to make a couple of quick edits to these textures that we just imported. If you didn't change the size that you export at, you can just copy the sizes that I'm doing here. So for the body, I'm going to do 4K. You can also edit these to your liking, but I'm not going to use any compression. The eye should be 1K. Mohawk is also 1K. And the props are 2K, so you can leave that. And lastly, the tail is also 2K, so leave that again. Okay, so now let's apply these textures to the materials. The materials are these round spheres right here. So let's find eye material, which is this right here. Select it, and now let's drag your eye texture into these two boxes right here. It should automatically apply to your avatar, so you can see now the eyes are green. This material right here is for the blush. If you changed the color of the blush, you can import those textures and put them in right here. You're going to need to make an edit to them though, just like the eyes, because the transparency won't work correctly. But I didn't edit the color of the blush, so I'm just going to ignore this material for now. You're also not going to see a change for the mohawk because I didn't edit that color, but I just wanted to show it as an example. This sunglasses material right here is the props. So um, if you see this one, drag in your props texture into this material. Okay, that's it for applying your custom textures to your VRM avatar. To find out how to finish uploading this avatar, go ahead and check out the VRM upload tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and as always, make sure to message me on either Discord, email, or Twitter if you have any questions. Bye!